I'm Pac. I'm Logan Lowe. Today we're breaking down the brutal fight scene between Kiko Uwais and Joe Taslam from Netflix's The Night Comes For Us. Special shout out to Joe Taslam. He was a member of the Indonesian Judo National Team. <laughs> this is also a special breakdown in which we answer questions from our YouTube and Discord community channels. On that note, hey, special shout out to Killer Tacos. Thanks so much for constantly recommending the scene. It's brutal, but we love it. Thanks, Killer Taco. Are you ready? Are you ready, Logan? You're about to get thrown through the earth. Yeah, so thanks, Killer Taco. Thanks. All right, classic face-off. Kind of looks like they're in a video game almost. Battle pose, battle pose. I need more battle poses. Yeah. Joe Taslam, you could tell he's a grappler. He's mm -hmm. lunging in for these grips. Okay. You really don't want to do that. You want to set it up with punches. Is gotcha. Punch work. Uchigari, Uchigari. Okay, let's look at that. That's our first judo throw. Now in this scene, you could tell Joe Taslam is a grappler. He is lunging to grab a hold of Eco, trying to get a collar sleeve or collar collar, really trying to close the distance. Right. Joe is spamming his opponent Eco with Ochigari. Mm -hmm. Ochigari is an inside trip. He does it three times. Ochigari, Ochigari, Ochigari. The jig is up. Eco knows this, times it, beautifully hits a counter Osotogari. Let's break that down. Wait, what? We're, we're 23 seconds in. <laughs> it's not gonna be fun for you, is it? Eko is effectively able to avoid Joe Taslam's Ochigari attempts by correctly stepping out. Now Eko steps across, shoots this leg through, counters with a beautiful Osotogari, follows up with the punch. Let's see that in full speed. And punched him, is the fight over? Looks like it, but no, Joe Taslam, Jito national team, he's a very tough guy. All right, and here we go. All right, now we see Joe Taslam hitting, using right. strikes, but loses a tooth for his effort. That's a nice touch. The tooth, that's a nice touch. A little striding towards. Oh man, my Jidoka brother's getting it, getting it pretty rough. He's trying to make a grab, though. He's, you can see him trying to grab. Yeah. Great punching by Eko. It's very, it's very stylish, though. I don't know if very those are, fresh. I don't know if those are legitimate strikes. Oh, they're totally legit. Really? Yeah. Okay. And that's a lot of blood. Eko's like, oh, you, you hurt my hand with your you face, man. <laughs> Clear out the blood in your nose, Joe. Yep. Ooh, he's got that Joker smile. But I like that he's throwing strikes to mix it up and right. close the distance. Lad's a great strike himself. Yeah, I wouldn't have guessed that he was a grappler. I'm glad you told me about the judo thing. Oh, uh, he went for a throw. He fails at an Ipon Seanagi. Okay. Very dangerous in a, in a real fight. Okay. Caught his leg. Mm hmm Oh, but he, he gets hit with the leg that, that he caught. That was funny. That was pretty funny. Oh, beautiful throw. Gets nice reversal. Out. Bam. Lands in mount. Ground and pound. Oh! <laughs> that hurt my hand. Man. Again, environment is so important in a fight. And do not get into a fight in a shop. That's what I'm learning from this scene. Let's take a pause right here. We mm -hmm. saw a lot of Jito attempts and throws that I want to break down. Mm -hmm. We saw Joe's attempted Ipon Seonagi attempt. What really happened? What could have happened? He also had a failed leg catch. Why didn't he take him down? Let's go over why and what he could have done. Eko's character goes for a big looping wide punch. Joe Taslam wisely blocks. Now, he would have to change his grip. He would have to grab somewhere like the forearm or the elbow. And to do an Ipon Seonagi, I would pivot my lead foot. I would insert my arm underneath the armpit as I pivot and turn 180 degrees, loading my opponent on my back before throwing him. But Eko's character does the wise thing. As Joe Taslam enters and pivots, turns, he blocks his hit. Now I can't generate any power and I failed at my Ipon Seonagi, but worse, I would give up my back. If I feel my opponent posting on my hip and I failed my attempt, I would do exactly what Joe did and immediately spin out into a combative stance. Now we have a question from our YouTube subscriber, Ben Buki. What could have Joe Taslam have done 
to hit that Ippon Sayanagi or I've done it better. I think Joe Taslam did everything correct. He blocked a big punch, entered immediately, had good rotation. It was only a matter of Iko having the perfect defense for it. Now, let's see what it would look like if Joe hit that Ippon Sayanagi in full speed. Now, let's take a look at Joe Taslam's leg catch against Iko and why he failed. The problem was, that he was just too stationary. If you don't move, it allows your opponent to effectively manipulate, turn, and in this case, Eco effectively also hit him and kicked him with the leg that got caught. Here, I'm gonna do what's called running the pipe. I have this leg caught here, I have one hand on the knee, and I'm gonna grab a chunk of meat right here. Nice grip. And I'm gonna twist it while I make a semicircle. I'm gonna get my big toe to meet his big toe, pivot, and pull down and I can lay on the ground and pound. Alternatively, I can easily kick out that planted leg. One way I like to do it is I like to reach across his shoulder, almost like a clothesline motion, and then step in and kick this out. Now they're back to striking. You know, Tasm has some nice kicks himself, actually, I gotta say. Yeah, it's not bad. You wouldn't think he's just a pure judoka. No, I- You really I, mixed it up now. I wouldn't have known that. For, for serious, I would not have noticed that. A lot of joint manipulations. Now, you don't do, do, does judo do a lot of joint manipulations? Not wrist locks, no. Gotcha, oh. Oh, flying oh. armbar. Nice. Nice. Let's see if he finishes it. Nope, Tasm gets out. Oh, Tasm gets out, easy. But he eats a punch for his efforts. Okay. Oh, now Eco takes mount. Okay, Ooh. top ground and pound. This is funny, because Joe Taslam is two hand choking right. Eco from the right. bottom mount. Really won't happen. Most guys can't even reach right. from bottom mount. Right. But yeah. also, he's, he's trained. He would never do that in real life. Of course, of course. Oh, is he slamming his head to concrete? Yeah. Damn. So there's an eye gouge almost? No. Nope. Oh, there it is, there it is. There's the eye gouge. Okay, oh. Oh, fish hooking. That, that's, that's so gross. That is super gross. Oh my god, I don't care how much I want to win a fight. Now, it's interesting, in a real fight, you would probably just try to bite down. Yeah. Oh, necktie choke. Okay, see, now that's why you wear clip-ons. I don't wear clip-ons. Okay. Oh, it's an elbow from bottom belt. <laughs> that's rough. Okay, good, taking off the tie. He means business, it's business They're time. running after Morote Gari. Doesn't finish it, what mm -hmm. happened there? Okay, more body shots. I love it. Ooh. Catches the kick again, this time throws him. Nice. That was all strength though. <laughs> throws him into the pillar. Ooh, these are some crazy blows that they're both- Ooh, <laughs> that hurt my head just watching. Man. That's gotta be devastating for a grappler to hurt their hand. Same thing with weapons work. You don't wanna hurt your gripping hand for sure. Oh, not good, not good. Get up, Tazlum. <laughs> Oh my god, that can't be good for anybody, grappler or striker, if you hurt your shin. I, I think that would have broken someone's shin. But we're not, we're not eco. We're not eco. Yes, that's facts. All right, Jack comes off. Oh, Katagaruma, fireman's carry. Right into a leg entanglement, probably trying to do a heel hook. Just a nice back roll. Nice. Okay. Perfect, Tomonage. I never realized how much judo was in this. And I really feel, personally, it should be Chad here and not me, I'm just saying. Hey, you're always talking about how young you look. Time to show it in real life. There's so much to go over. Morote Gari, Tomonagi that we just saw, Kataguruma. Let's bring out the crash mat. Ah, <sighs> Jesus Christ. In this scene, Joe Taslam and Iko are running after each other, and Joe wisely drops his level and enters with a beautiful Morote Gari, which in wrestling we call a double leg takedown. He has both hands around his legs and he actually even lifts him up. There was honestly no real reason when you have your opponent's legs up in the air like this, you can't finish the takedown. So let's go over two possible finishes he could do from here. The first option to finish a Morote Gari is a traditional Morote Gari finish where Joe Tazlum had the double leg, had Iko lift it up and just reap his legs and take him down straight down. Another option, and personally my preferred option of finishing a Morote Gari is actually a wrestling style finish where I have my opponent's legs up in the air just like Joe did, and I'm moving laterally to scoop, 
his legs out from underneath me. Here, Joe Taslam enters a traditional kataguruma, or in wrestling, a fireman's carry, by grabbing the tricep, entering his head and arm through the leg, loading him on his shoulders, and throwing him in front, immediately transitioning to a leg entanglement. Now, what Iko could have done to prevent getting thrown in this situation is not walk directly toward him. He really walked into that throw, but he did it and paid the price by getting thrown with a kataguruma or a fireman's carry. Here, Joe Taslam hits Iko with a beautiful tomanage. Oh, the Captain Kirk. Yeah, the Captain Kirk. <laughs> it's a very popular throw. You see that in all kinds of video games. I remember first seeing it playing Street Fighter in the 90s. Now, what Iko could have done to avoid the tomanage is how you would avoid any forward looping judo throws. Don't rush in. The tomonage happens because it redirects your opponent's energy and you toss them overhead by sacrificing yourself. Now, with that said, let's see how Joe hits the tomonage. Here, Joe has one hand on the collar and one hand wrapped around Iko's tricep. Now, this fight is rough and there's a lot of offensive, aggressive energy. Joe wisely redirects that energy by stepping in places his foot on the lower abdomen while pulling his upper body down and away while he goes down to throw him overhead. Now let's see that at full speed. Ah. Uh. All right, looks like Joe Taslam's trying to choke him with a cross collar choke, but it's not exactly in. So I don't know why Iko's being affected by this. Gotcha. Okay, and Iko is grabbing something, like a weapon. So you always want a tool or a weapon. Hits him with a good Iponse Anage here. Okay, again, he's, he's grasping for stuff. He's trying to grab, oh, no he's not. He's about to eat a saw. Ooh. Don't eat the saw. Oh. Don't turn it I on. I forgot to press the power button. And now you remember. <laughs> See, as an actor, you couldn't pay me enough. Couldn't no, pay me enough no way. I, I hope this was CGI. Jesus. All right. Don't. Ooh, okay. What was that? That was a jar of, that was a jar of tax. Oh, stabs him with the screwdriver. Right into the gut. I wonder if it was a Phelps head. Wow. These are questions life may never answer, Hawk. <laughs> and he's accessing damage. Okay, he's pulling it out, which makes sense because they're in the middle of a fight. <laughs> Eco looks like a pincushion. <laughs> looks like the Infinity Gauntlet. <laughs> yeah, that's true. All right. They're assessing themselves. They're like, this does not look good. I'm gonna need a day off tomorrow. At what point do you just say, hey, this is getting out of hand? One minute in, I would be like, all right, I'm out. This is what happens when men don't talk about their feelings. Like, this kind of stuff. Oof, Ooh. he got punched in the stomach, it looks like. Caught him? <laughs> Tried to do a <laughs> kind of a flying kick. Now it's turning into an obstacle course. Sure. Joe Taslam, he needs to get past the rolling pipes and the Ninja Warrior obstacle. I wonder how Tasm's knees are doing in real life, okay? Now, eco has got the leg and okay. lost the leg. Yep. Okay. Now, they're... Oh, that's an interesting... Okay, let's pause this right here because we've gotten a bunch of questions from our YouTube and Discord community channels, specifically from Killer Taco and P-R-E-A-M. That usually means something rules everything around me. Paper. 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 Paper rolls everything around me. It does. Let's break this move. Let's see if it's legit. Now, we get a lot of questions about this throw, asking if it's legit or not. And my answer is honestly, no. Let's look at how Joe Tasm threw Eco and why it wouldn't work and why it's not realistic. First, he has a collar grip, like so. He shoots his leg through, grabs his cheeks, and rolls over to throw, trying to generate forward momentum. And the reason why it doesn't work is a simple answer, physics. Listen, there is no forward momentum here. Instead, this is a legit entry to a collar choke. First, I'm gonna grab a deep grip on my opponent's collar while I shoot my leg through and across his stomach. Now, instead of grabbing my opponent's pants like Joe Taslam did, I'm gonna take the same hand, going inside his arms, chopping at the elbow, rolling through, looping this hand behind his head, bringing the same side leg that's choking him with the collar over his shoulder, crossing my feet, finishing the choke. Chasm's shaking off the cobwebs. 
I like how Tasm's holding on to his belly because he did get stabbed there. And weapons time. All right, my turn, Pac. And all right, what does he have exactly? Oh, he's got a box cutter. What took so long? <laughs> well, you know, he's got to find the right weapon. It looks like the weapon broke off into Tasm's arm. Makes sense because that's not a very strong weapon. Box cutters aren't meant to be weapons. Ooh, he's opening up the box cutter. Okay. Oh man, it looks like he stabbed the leg. Is that it's, the femoral artery? It's hard to see if that was a slash to the femoral, which would be a fight ender and probably a life ender. It looks more like it's a stab into the thigh. I thought it was a stab. It looked like a stab because he would be bleeding out very quickly because a slash to the femoral artery, you're done and you're done quickly. So he would be getting lightheaded and falling to the ground right now. Okay. That was becoming a brutal weapons fight. Exactly. Mm. Oh, there's a lot of stabbing. And it looks like Joe Tasman just grabbed a shard of something. Oh, went right into the arm. Oh, man. That is brutal. Now, Iko should be doing a lot more slashing right now instead of, he's trying to stab with a box cutter. Not ideal, we should talk about that later. Okay, not, ooh! Oh my God, that was disgusting. Okay, we just saw an actual unzippering, which we talked about previously in Hammer Girl. Um, yeah, just as gross as I thought it would now, be. Now, this scene makes me think that there's no such thing as a winner in a, in a weapons fight. There's there's no such thing as a winner. There's only different levels of losing, I suppose. <laughs> I lost less than you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, no. Okay, somehow he's still alive and still how are, going. How are they still fighting? I have no idea. Oh, went right through the hand, grabbed the weapon. Oh, no. What did he stab? What did he stab? Oh. Oh, we're seeing a lot of tit for tat, blow for blow in this, in this for scene. For sure. Holy cow. Oh, my God. That's gross. That is so gross. Do you know how Joe Tassum got those scars? Oh, nice, nice <laughs> Joker callback. Nice Joker callback. No. Oh God. Now, did Joe did do the right thing by breaking off the blade that stuck in his cheek? I'm at a loss for words, honestly, because this is not one of those things you prepare for. One doesn't really prepare for getting stabbed in the cheek. <laughs> I would have to say yes, because otherwise what you don't want is you don't want Eco to slash out. So you want to get that out without giving Eco the opportunity to slash out. So I'm going to say yes. I want to know at what point in the Kali curriculum they teach that. That's like in the master class. That's at a level beyond me, ladies and gentlemen. All right. These are, see now, now, Pac, this is what happens when men don't talk about their feelings ahead of time. Because I think all of this could have been taken care of with a good cup of coffee and like, you know, croissant of some sort. Or therapy. Or therapy, you know? Yeah. Don't discount therapy, kids. If they didn't get therapy before this, whoever wins this, they need therapy after. For sure. How is, I need therapy watching this. For sure. Ooh. Ooh. Wait, what's he gonna do now? Is he stabbing him? I think they're having, see, they're having the conversation too late. Now they're having the conversation. He should have had this conversation nine minutes ago. Looks like Joe Taslam won this fight. Well, who really won, really? I think, I think they're both dead inside. I think we all lost. <laughs> I lost a bit of something when I watched this. All right, we saw a lot of things. We saw use of shards. We saw use of terrain and environment. We saw use of the box cutter. Got a lot to break down. All right, you ready to get punished, Spock? So because this scene essentially all takes place in a workshop, it looks like, there's access to all of these improvised weapons, one of which is an enormously large screwdriver. Uh, the way it was used by Eco against Taslam, it was basically used as a stabbing weapon. Certainly that's valid and it would work for that. But another way you can use something like a screwdriver, especially one of this length, is as a whipping weapon. So it's not so much you're striking, which is a solid wrist and a solid arm, it's more of a whip where I come out and I'm slapping the person here. I'm whipping it out. And this is sharp enough that I could probably cause some lacerations. And even if I don't, I can cause bone damage and muscle damage by doing the whipping motion here. Okay, another quick segue into Taslam's improvised weapon. The danger of using a shard of glass as an improvised weapon is what? You're cutting yourself. So in terms of realism here, Taslam grabbed the weapon, but his hand is getting cut every time he grabs it. That is a danger. Can you do it? Yes. Is it worth the exchange in danger to cut your dominant hand 
I don't know, I wouldn't do it. There's too many nerves here, and the last thing I want to do is not be able to grip a weapon and adequately defend myself. But let's see what Taslim did. Note that Taslim used the shard to do an unzippering, which we saw previously. And now we can see what it looks like with an edged weapon. For our longtime viewers, for those of you that remember the Raid 2 Hammer Girl, the issue with the unzippering in that scene, the claw is not meant to slash. The claw is literally meant to claw. It's meant to stop. So this wouldn't have worked. However, now we have an improvised weapon. It is a bladed weapon, it is edged. So here, Taslim could plunge the weapon into Eco and then do an unzippering. Okay, now what do you think? Would that have ended the fight? Hard to say, especially with edged weapons, because depending on how sharp it is, sometimes you don't even feel it until it's too late. That's yet another danger about fighting someone that is armed with an edged weapon. Out of all the improvised weapons, including the screwdriver, the pipe, even the jar of thumbtacks, the one I like the most is the box cutter, but it's a very different type of edge weapon than we dealt with previously. It's completely manual. There's no automatic version of it. You can't like flick it out with your thumb. You have to literally, as you saw Eco do, push it out. Moreover, because of these etchings in the blade where it's supposed to break off, Eco stabbed the blade into Taslim's arm and the blade broke off. The issue with that, as you saw, is Eco only had a little bit of blade left to work with before that would break off as well. So that is another defect when it comes to using a box cutter as a weapon. Let's talk about a way that Eco could have used it but didn't use it. With the blade retracted, I could use both edges as an impact weapon here and here. And when I got really close, I could then take out the blade. Again, there's not much blade left anymore. What little blade I've got left, I can use that to cut. If Eco wanted to use this exclusively as a blade, to be honest, there should be almost no stabbing motions. There should only be slashing motions. Again, it is called a box cutter, not a box stabber. So that's what I would have done should I find myself in a fight with only a box cutter. As a fan of martial arts films and choreography, this fight was so entertaining and it delivered the goods in brutality and violence, so it deserves an A. However, we grade for realism and this fight took way too long and there were so many missed opportunities for fight enders yep. that we have to give it a B minus. But we loved it. <laughs>